Hi there, welcome to another episode of the uh, Grand Matters Fireside video series where we will be tackling the seemingly bottomless subject of digestion. Um, this is obviously a, a huge issue um, and uh, there's certainly a lot of legitimate concerns uh, with with uh, the horse's digestive system which I think many of you are aware of but what I thought we'd start off with is just basically a run a quick run through of kind of what it what happens how it works and then on I think some subsequent videos we'll break it down into particular parts of the digestive system and the different types of ingredients that could be helpful uh, with those parts so on the screen now we've got basically a standard uh, diagram of, of you know the, the layout of the horse's digestive system and and so obviously we're starting in the mouth um, in the mouth the horse is uh, mixing with saliva um, the uh, forage or, or feed whatever they're uh, consuming which is going to pass through the esophagus nothing is really happening in the esophagus per se and then we get into the stomach and in the stomach um, ingredients are liquefied fairly quickly probably in the stomach for only 15 to 20 minutes obviously this is an area where there's a you know a lot of uh, potential issues and, and much of that is because of the way that horses are eating now versus the way that they evolved to eat which is to eat a, a, a series of small amounts pretty much on a cons constant basis I mean horses really evolved to be eating about 20 out of every 24 hours um, and, and generally speaking, you know, they're not doing that. And, and a lot of times they're getting large amounts of feed, uh, uh, you know, on an inconsistent basis, which is, is really counter uh, to the way that, that that stomach was designed. However, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, so hydrochloric acid is, is produced uh, and there are also some enzymes uh, that are produced that start the uh, digestive process and obviously the big f concern here is with those uh, erratic deliveries of feed we can get this pooling of hydrochloric acid uh, in the stomach which which can result in in uh, the formation of ulcers in the non-glandular or the upper part of the stomach but again we'll get into those in more detail in a subsequent video so after the stomach it's going to pass into the small intestine and this is where uh, a very significant percentage of nutrient absorption occurs. The entire small intestine is lined with these little nodules called villi. And it's through them that the, the uh, nutrients pass through some cells called the enterocytes and ultimately into the bloodstream. So uh, a lot of uh, nutrients, uh, aminos, uh, certain minerals, uh, vitamins, um, are, are uh, absorbed in the small intestine uh, and then we get into the cecum um, and in the cecum uh, which is kind of an unusual shape because both the entrance and the exit of the cecum are kind of almost in the same place at, at, at the top of the cecum and, and this is why we can often have uh, gas colic issues um, in, in the cecum when uh, the small intestine hasn't been able to do enough of a good job in breaking down the carbohydrate starches. And again, we'll get into this in more detail. Um, but certainly a, a very considerable amount of nutrient absorption is occurring in the small intestine. Now we get into the, uh, after the cecum where uh, basically that bacterial uh, uh, di digestion process is, is really starting there. That's where we we have you know this population of benef beneficial bacteria uh, and they're going to be starting to break down the more indigestible fibrous parts of the forage um, this process continues in the large colon um, and in the large colon that's where for example you'll find um, the absorption of many of the B vitamins um, you'll find uh, the production of the volatile fatty acids which is critical to the horse's energy um, and uh, pretty much after the, uh, the uh, ingredients uh, are uh, passing out of the uh, large colon into the small colon, there really isn't much more uh, nutrient digestion that's going to occur basically in the small colon. Uh, it's going to be uh, taking moisture uh, out of the uh, uh, 
remainder uh, of the feed that, that's reached the small colon and then subsequently obviously we hopefully produce uh, nice uh, fecal balls which, which pass into to the rectum and, and out of the anus. So that is um, basically, you know, how it all works. Um, uh, you know, we're faced with, with modern horse management, you know, again, the challenge is, is so much about that horses evolved, uh, wandering over a wide area, uh, eating small amounts of a number of different plants, and, and, and that's why they were able to survive so well. And, and we really have kind of changed that dynamic. And this is where, obviously, uh, dietary supplements for horses uh, can offer significant benefits um, because, you know, the horse isn't necessarily getting all of those things from the pasture or, or, or even from a grain product. Um, and we, you know, we, we, we definitely find that there's a benefit um, whether it be because of the way that horse is being used, because obviously if you're doing some kind of a high performance riding discipline, that's placing a great deal more stress on the horse's uh, system. Uh, and, and that's where, you know, some of these nutraceuticals can come into play. Um, obviously all of the different digestive aids uh, are there, you know, for first of all the stomach, for the small intestine, and also for the large intestine. But as I said, we'll sort of get into those in a little bit more detail. We'll break it down, but uh, just as sort of an initial primer, I just wanted to go over the, you know, basically how it all works, uh, and then we'll continue from there. So uh, episode two on digestion will be coming up soon, and thanks for watching.